Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Pilot's Notes. This time we're looking at the channel hopping antics of the Czechoslovakian RAF flight lieutenant Karol Kutlvesha, or Kut to his friends. He's probably best known for flying the Hurricane in its role as a night intruder. Night intrusion flights were conducted without radar, so they were confined to clear, moonlit nights. The pilots frequently used to wear dark glasses in the daytime and spend hours in darkened rooms in an effort to preserve the sensitivity of their vision. The intention behind these raids, uh, which were more often than not undertaken by a single aircraft, was to hit German bombers while out or near their home airfields on mainland France. Additionally, the pilots used to regularly attack and destroy freight trains in an effort to disrupt enemy supply lines. Here, Kuttelvesha describes one such mission. The following words are his. By dusk, everything was ready, and after an hour of waiting in dispersal and having a nice cup of English tea, I set off. All the boys wished me luck and told me they would wait in dispersal until I returned. It seemed to me that I had never before in my life taken off so smoothly. I felt so free and exhilarated with the moon shining above me and the channel already in sight. I lowered the revs for economy's sake and with a smoothly purring engine I left the English coast behind me. Arriving in France I located an aerodrome with its flare path dimmed and there I saw a plane, a uh, Junkers Ju-88, taxiing with its navigation lights on. He was just taking off and I swooped down to get behind him. I passed through his slipstream and got rather a bump, but, slowing my speed a little, I was able to get within firing range. With my gun sight and firing button already switched on and the plane looming up right in front of me, I gave it a long burst and saw it catch fire in a matter of seconds. I was obliged to pull out quickly to the right to avoid colliding with it and I watched it hit the ground and burst into flames. I made a half circle to the left and saw just in time another plane taking off. Again, I dived, opened fire from slightly above and behind him, but at that moment I was caught by four searchlights and fired on with streams of shells from the ground defences. I had to be content with only damaging the second plane as the firing still continued from the ground. It wasn't very accurate firing, but it was time for me to make my way home. On a later raid, Kuttelvesha, joined by a number of other night intrusion pilots, was met by a rather remarkable sight. The following words are his. Knowing that a large force of enemy planes were attacking England, it was decided that the intruders should go out in strength. We did so and were fully rewarded for our work. I took off when the attack on one of our towns was finishing. I made my way post-haste to a French aerodrome which I felt sure they must be using for this attack. Some boys had already got there ahead of me, so I hurried to join them at the last minute. What a spectacle confronted me on arriving at the aerodrome. About 20 Jerrys, Heinkel HE-111s, were awaiting their turn to land and, being in a hurry, they flashed on and off all the lights they had. I decided I'd better get within close range and give my victims short bursts in order to make my cannon shells go further. Jerry knew that we were hovering around in strength and so they kept switching their navigation lights on and off to Foxes. We, however, went boldly after our prey, knowing that there was no danger from the ground defences while their own planes were flying around. As I waited for an opportunity to get at the Jerry's, I saw one pass right over my head. In a split second, I had pulled my stick back and had fired two short bursts at him. Flames shot instantly out of one engine, and down he went into a steep dive to hit the ground. Again, pulling my plane quickly to the right, I did the same to a second one, which had been simply begging for it with its navigation lights full on. He too caught fire and hit the ground with a shower of sparks flying all around me. All this shooting had taken place in one minute and now I had the opportunity of looking round me a little, as there was nothing in my vicinity at that moment. I saw one of our boys also doing his best and sending a Hun hurtling earthwards in flames. I once more fixed on a Hun to shoot down, but it took me three minutes to get within close range as the devil kept switching his navigation lights on and off as he waited his turn to land. At last I got into position for the attack, but this time it took me a little bit more ammo to finish him off. He turned into a steep left-hand dive, with me on his tail, firing ceaselessly. I was obliged, however, to pull up my plane and climb once more to a safe height, as I was far too near the ground. Shortly after this, the AA guns started waking up and firing with great enthusiasm. Kuttelvesha, deciding not to push his luck, thought it was probably time to call it a night. For this and other missions, he was rewarded with a DFC, well, thanks again for watching. I'll be returning to the Hurricane a number of times to try and emphasise what an important role it played during the Second World War, a role which is often eclipsed by its prettier, though more highly strung cousin, the Spitfire. Should you have access to the recollections of World War II pilots of any nation, 
I'd be more than happy to receive them. You can get in touch through the contact page over at digitaldigging.net or through the Digital Digging Facebook page or Google+. Links to all of these can be found in the description box below. If you found this video enjoyable, or at the very least somewhat interesting, and you'd like to see more, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Right, take care chaps, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.